this reality that we live in is conscious. It's alive and it is responding to us all the time. It is responding to our thoughts. It is responding to our ways of being. It's responding to our actions and it is reflecting back to us who we are being in every moment. I'm Washayla Sananda. Thank you for joining me today. So today I have this desire to just to kind of share with you a little deeper about how this reality responds to us and reacts to us in every moment. And it's really exciting because as things are speeding up, last week I talked about the quickening and how to stay aligned in the quickening. But as this quickening process is happening, we are evolving very rapidly. And in that evolving experience, things are happening, it seems faster. And manifestation is very quick. And the way that we are interacting with our environment, with this world, with this life, with consciousness itself, is what reflects our life back to us in every moment. So in every moment, life is showing us who we're being, and it's responding to our ways of being. So it's also responding to our thoughts. It's responding to our emotions. It's responding to our actions. And as we interact with consciousness, as we become more and more and more aware that this is how it is here, this is how things work and how this place operates, we can gain more, it's it's really more sovereignty, more personal power, more authentic expression of ourselves in the world because we understand the way that I am outputting is going to affect the input. And what I mean by that, that's kind of computer terms for, and this is an encoded reality. So it is code. When you understand how to work with the codes in this reality, you can code your own life and have the life that you desire to live. And I just am, I'm enjoying this experience so much in this time of, of vitality and fertility on on the in this reality because things are so instantly manifesting now. And so it also responds, it's not just responding to our positivity and our positive intentions and our positive ways of being. It's also responding to our doubt. So for instance, if you are considering doing something and you're about 90% in, but 10% of you is like, hmm, I'm just not sure. I, I have these doubts. I have these questions. I have this uncertainty. The universe, the reality, whatever you want to call it, this place that we're in, the consciousness will respond. It will give you back an experience of that uncertainty. And so you'll find things to reflect your own uncertainty back to you until you get to that 100% certain point. And here's the thing. It's not enough just to like brush into it and be like, okay, I'm, I'm hundred percent sure now when you choose to be 100% certain and choose to act in a certain way, then that is when you're really giving permission to, I'm just going to call this the, the universe for now because it's universally happening. So that's when you give permission to the universe to reflect your certainty back to you. And this is such a key ingredient. I think a lot of people miss this. They're like, well, I'm 80% sure. I'm 90% sure. 95% sure. Even 98% sure is not going to give you your 100% certainty and have that reflected back to you until you get to that 100% mark. You're still going to have signs of where you are because we're always going to have signs of where we're sitting in any situation. Do you choose to sit in your uncertainty and 
let that marinate and overtake you. And then that becomes your, what your reality is attracting, or do you decide, and this is where faith comes in, because how can we really be a hundred percent certain of anything? If you look at evidence in the world, you're going to always be able to find evidence of what you're looking for, no matter what it is. Let's just take the current, a current diet. Okay. So there's so many diets out there, whether it's keto or I just got the glucose goddess, you know, if it's the glucose diet or if it's anything else, um, you'll find, and I, I have a bachelor's degree in, in holistic nutrition. One of the things that they did was presented completely opposite viewpoints with facts from different uh, doctors and scientists. So whatever it was that you that you learned about, then you'd learn about someone that's proven the opposite to be true, and they both have proof. So what this is reflecting is that when we're so clear about something that we're choosing it. And there's got to be a piece of faith involved, sometimes a big amount of faith involved to choose to be 100% certain and act in a certain way. That's the certainty as if this is absolutely what it is. This is my truth. I am certain of it. I have faith. I have more than faith. I have certainty. Then that reflects back to you, your certainty everywhere. But until you get to that point of I'm 100% choosing certainty, you're going to get a reflection of whether it's your resistance or your uncertainty, that's going to be shown back to you. And you will see evidence of that in the world and in what you're looking at. So I have this book in front of me. I have read this book multiple times. I've referenced it before. It is called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. Um, and it's an old, uh, I don't know, I think from the forties, so an older book, but so, so, so good. And don't let the name fool you. The science of getting rich is not very much about science. It's not very much about money, although you can use it that way. It's really about richness in all areas of living this life. And so one of the things that Wallace Waddles always says, like repeatedly in this book is that, when you act in a certain way, and this has, you know, double meaning because it's acting, there's a type of way that is the certain way that you need to act, but that way is the certain way. You must be certain in your actions in order to experience the benefits of the universe reflecting your certainty back to you. I hope this is making sense to you because when you get it, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to play in this world of I'm choosing certainty in this area and then seeing the magic, like really, it's like magic is happening when you choose this level of certainty. Like I just choose that this is a hundred percent true for me. Then it's true because the universe is reflecting back the truth of it. Um, yesterday I was at the drum circle at Siesta Key and talking with some friends. And one of my friends said, I have a question for you on the flat earth versus round earth conversation. What do you believe? And I said, what I believe is it doesn't matter what anyone believes. I don't have a strong opinion about it because what I understand and what I understand is that when you are certain that the earth is round, then it is round for you. And all evidence will point to that. And when you are certain that the earth is flat, then you will have the experience of flat earth and that will be reflected back to you. And honestly, I don't believe that it's either. I'm not certain that it's round or flat. I'm certain that we're in an encoded reality that reflects our way of being back to us. And this encoded reality is if you want to call it the matrix, you can call it that, whatever you want to call it, um, the firmament, the simulacrum, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. It's a reality where we get to play and experience the results of our intentions and our ways of being in our authenticity. So Wallace D. Waddles in his book, The Science of Getting Rich, often says, you are a creative center from which increase is given to all. Be sure of this. Let me say that again. You 
are a creative center from which increase is given to all. Be sure of this. And let's unpack that a little bit. What does it mean to be a creative center from which increase is given? We are the container of the divine, of life itself, of the substance that animates life, that is life on this planet. We are embodied light, embodied life. And we are expressing that in every moment through our thoughts, words, and actions, and energetically on our emotions, many, many, many ways. So to be a creative center, that's what we are. We're this vortex. We're this toroidal field of energetic expression. We are a creative center from which increase is given to all increase. I am increasing you with this inner standing, with these codes, with these activations, with these gnosis expressions. And if you receive that, and when you receive that inner standing for yourself, you are receiving increase and you will expand in some way in your mind, in your spirit, in your inner gnosis, in your knowing, your understanding, in your, in your expression of being, you will increase, you will expand the divine wants to expand. Consciousness is living in you and through you for the purpose of expanding in its gnosis, in its knowing more, in its gaining understanding. And life experience increases consciousness, which is the one. The one is the consciousness that is in us and acting through us in every moment. And so through this action, we are increasing. And through my intention and acting in a certain way, I am certain that I am giving increase to all. And I am sure of this. And so in this acting in a certain way, I am being certain that this is so, and I put that certainty out. I let go of any doubt that it might not be true. It doesn't matter if I'm certain it is so. And the universe reflects back to me that certainty in so many ways in the realm of increase. So it's increasing me spiritually, energetically, in communion and connections with others, in abundance, financial abundance, in the beautiful space that I get to live in abundance, abundance in love and relationships, abundance in all areas of life. I get to experience increase when I am certain that I am giving increase to all. And in this, this just amplifies generosity, the desire to give and to let what I have increase others. Do you see how this is the way of being in the new world? And yes, this book was written many years ago, but it's so relevant still and ongoing because it's a truth of this reality. Our certainty is reflected back to us at the very level of our uncertainty. And, and it's reflected back to us in certainty when we have reached maximum certainty. <laughs> I hope you can understand that I'm using certainty in a multiple, in multiple, multidimensional way, multidimensional way, because it has a lot of different levels of meaning. And this is one of those books that when I read it, and then I read it again, and then I read it every time I read it, I'm receiving it from where I am now. So I'm receiving more. I'm increased by it. And when I increase from the reading of it, the next time I read it, I will increase again because I'm receiving it at that new level. So this is true of all tr divine truths. This is true of all 
divine truths. They increase us and expand us. And then when we come to them again, we are expanded again, as long as they are in certain, certainly in truth, in our truth, then we will be increased by them and expanded by them. And when these teachings are no longer expansive, then it's time to move on to a different teaching or a different gnosis. And we have all of this within us. For me, this is one of those books that found me many years ago, and it was perfect for me at that time to help me move into the next level of understanding of my being. And then, you know, continuously when I pick it up, um, my, div my divine guidance pinged me this morning. My, my, I am said, Hey, go get that book. And I just paged through it and I'm just like, yes, 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 yes. It's about certainty. And I have had, um, you know, I've been doing some new endeavors and I've had a lot of incredible, beautiful certainty reflected back to me and a little bit of uncertainty. And w when I see people in their uncertainty, I can, it's, it's so easy to see how that uncertainty can be unleashed and expanded so quickly if it's not kept in check. But, but, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way that it operates. That's the way consciousness operates. When you go into doubt, when you go into fear, it's this, that expands. And it's like, it really is like a cancer. Fear is a cancer where it starts multiplying and reproducing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's up to you to hone it in and close that door of uncertainty and of fear if you want to experience the magic of certainty. <laughs> And it's a lot of fun. I mean, when you get this, I don't expect you to get it. If this is the first time you're you're even hearing this, you know, expression, you are a creative center from which increase is given to all. When I first heard that, I had to ponder it. Like, what, what in the world does that even mean? And then as I read the book and as I understood it more and as I understood it, then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Certainty, being behaving in a certain way, being in a certain way reflects back that way of being. It certainly does. And the more clear that becomes in my life, the more instant the manifestations, the more abundant my reality becomes, the more fun, the more playful, the more joyful, the more I enjoy it. And the more I attract the people who also enjoy it and have fun with it. And it is always my intention to attract the people to my work and to my play, to my life, who will be increased by my certainty and may, and that I will be increased by theirs and that we will increase each other because that's the natural way of things. And that people who are, who are even just tapping into my work for the first time will start to understand it and receive it and have their own gnosis and be increased by it and reflect that back to me. That also increases me. That also increases the the, the reality that we live in with certainty that we are the creators here. <laughs> this is really fun. I, I feel like this is such a playful uh, expression of being, and that's really the energy that I'm in today. I hope that I transferred some of that to you. And, you know, for anyone that feels like, oh, spirituality really has to be serious. I find the more, the more I get into it. And the more I dive in, the more certainty that I have in my spiritual path, the more fun and playful it becomes. The more like actually silly this reality is. It can be so fun and playful and silly. That does not mean there aren't, you know, all kinds of other things going on out there. People are choosing to have all of the experiences that they're having. And I've had plenty of negative experiences and challenging experiences and shadow stuff. That's all part of it too. I'm not saying that never happens. And when we work through those things, it can be so much fun. So I just am wanting to give you some food for thought today to find those areas in your life where you're noticing 
the reality reflecting uncertainty back to you, reflecting some sort of like, oh, I'm not quite aligned or there's something I want to be aligned with, but I'm not. Where, you know, this is your exploration. Where am I uncertain about that thing? Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's, uh, you know, something else. It could be anything really. But where is that uncertainty showing up for you? If it's showing up, then you know it's in you somewhere. And, and, you know, it can show up even if it's not in you, but if it's showing up and you get engaged by it, or you get triggered by it, or you get brought down by it, you get grabbed by it somehow. If it, if it can get its grips on you, then it is in you for sure. If if someone, for instance, responds to this message and says, well, Shayla, I don't like what you said. It's not true. It's not right. It's blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I do get those messages. I could read that today and say, oh, you know, that's where that person is. Okay, that's fine. You know, it means nothing to me. And it doesn't get, it doesn't bring me down. It doesn't, it doesn't create uncertainty in me because I'm certain about this. But if there's something in me that's like not certain that what I'm sharing is so, and someone sends me something negative about it, and I choose to engage with it and let that cause um, distraction or misalignment from my certainty that could like suck me into a whole rabbit hole of uncertainty and, and completely change how, who I'm being in the world. Um, and this is also where we get to be responsible in our lives for where are we being that, that voice of uncertainty for someone else. And this is something I see a lot where even, you know, like in parenting, a lot of times my son will make a choice that I do not agree with and I don't think is a good choice. And yet I have the, the understanding as a spiritual being that if he believes in what he's doing and he is aligned to it. What my job then is to ask him, it's to ask him some questions. Tell me why you're aligned to that. Tell me what it is about that. It's not my job to say, you're wrong. That's not right. You're, you know, and then instill fear and doubt in him. My job is to, is to see, like, maybe, maybe just give some possibilities of expanding his truth right? With some, some questions. Why do you feel that way? Tell me more about that. Help me understand. I don't see it that way yet. Help me understand your certainty in that. And sometimes in that questioning, he'll get more aligned to his truth. And sometimes he will get the opposite. He'll be like, oh, wait a minute. You know what? I'm not certain anymore about that. <laughs> and it's not my job to tell him how to think. It's my job to help him hone his truth and his authenticity. And I think so many times I see people not, not doing that, but, but reflecting or, or sharing their uncertainty because of their fear. And so this is really the challenge, like where, where in your relationships with other people, are you reflecting to them your fear about who they are or what they're doing or what they're saying or who they're being or something, some choice that they're making? rather than allowing that person to make their choice in their own certainty and to support them in their authenticity, rather than saying, that's just wrong. No, that's not true. Well, maybe it's not true for you, but maybe it's true for them. You know, so often you can see this in the cryptocurrency world. Um, there's something called FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. How appropriate for this conversation. Some people get into cryptocurrency and make a ton of money. And other people get into it and invest, make the same investments, but because of their FUD, their fear, uncertainty, and doubt, they bring their, they, they, uh, they come out of it at the wrong time, or they invest in it at the wrong time, and they lose money. Same investment, different timing, but different levels of certainty, right? Certainty and uncertainty. And what I've seen is that when the people that are so certain about their investing and so positive and uplifted and strong and certain about it, 
invest that way, they tend to make really good decisions on when to come in and when to get out of certain coins. And the people that have the uncertainty are the ones that say, oh yeah, I lost a bunch of money in that because I, I got in and, you know, and it was the wrong time and I got out at this time and then it went up and blah, 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 you know, but their uncertainty was guiding their investment. Don't, don't do your investments in uncertainty. Do them when you're certain and then stand behind your certainty and let your certainty grow. And if you start to listen to the FUD that's out there, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and you let that penetrate your certainty, then inevitably you will be at a decrease in all aspects of that container. Okay. I think that I, I hope that I've conveyed this message to you in a way that uh, is digestible and assimilable to you. And my intention in this is to support you in growing your certainty in all of the ways that you are choosing to be and live in your life. And where might you make adjustments in your life that will bring you into alignment with certainty and with acting in a certain way. Thank you for joining me today. If this was helpful, uplifting to you, give me a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe to my channel. You can also get on my email list if you want to know what I'm up to and what events and things I have going on. And I just appreciate you tuning in so much. If this was helpful to you, I'd also love it if you share it. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Washayla Sananda. I love you. I cherish you. Namaste.